Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course on uh, medical biomaterials. Today we are going to talk about uh, properties, the mechanical properties a biomaterial should have. It should have lot of mechanical properties depending upon uh, the location of the material. For example, if you look at the human body, it contains 270 bones at birth and it reduces to 206 bones um, as you grow older because certain bones get fused. Uh, so, the bones uh, for example, if you look at the humerus, if you look at the radius which is outside, if you look at the ulna which is inside the arms, then you have your hand and fingers, then if you go to the feet, you have the femur, then uh, lower uh, fibula, uh, tibia and then the, uh, the actual feet. Okay. So, there are many bones which undergo quite a lot of uh, tension which undergo quite a lot of compression and um, after an orthopedic uh, surgery, replacement of some bone or uh, filling up of some defects, uh, we are going to place biomaterial. It could be a metallic biomaterial, it could be a combination of metals and ceramics and so on. So, these materials should have the desired mechanical properties. So, that is very, very important. So, these materials will face um, either tension depending upon where it is placed uh, material or they may undergo compression uh, depending upon where the biomaterial is placed. So, the biomaterial has to be tested for several mechanical properties especially um, materials which are involved in the orthopedic. Um, that is why there are uh, metals used quite a lot in orthopedic situations like stainless steel 316L, titanium, then alloys and so on actually because uh, these can take up lot of uh, load. Especially if you look at uh, uh, these parts here, it is going to take up the load of the human being. Um, so, they have to um, be quite strong. Okay. So, what are the mechanical properties? Compressive strength, um, tensile strength, bending strength because uh, many times as you know we keep bending our arms, our foot, our leg and so on. So, the material has to have that particular um, property, flexural strength. Uh, again, uh, we are uh, flexing some parts. Even if you take the uh, heart valve, diaphragm heart valve, uh, it keeps opening, closing, opening, closing so many thousands of time a day and for a very, very long period. So, they should have the enough strength. Then modulus the modulus of elasticity that is related to the stress and the strain. So, these are the mechanical properties uh, uh, the material has to have. Uh, it is not that all biomaterials should have this, but especially materials which are involved in orthopedic surgery um, have to have some of these properties depending upon where it is placed in the human body. Um, so, elastic modulus, what is elastic modulus? This is the ratio of stress to strain. Okay. Uh, the most important, in fact the most imp uh, difficult challenge is to have a material which has the elastic modulus of that of the bone. Bone has a very low elastic modulus and we do not want very strong material like stainless steel actually because that has very high elastic modulus. So, then came titanium and then now they are looking at other alloys so that you can keep on reducing the elastic modulus. Whereas, uh, 30, 40 years back. Uh, the general feeling was to have material which are extremely um, high in elastic modulus, but uh, they have realized that uh, we should not have such material placed next to the bone um, because uh, the bone elastic modulus and the material elastic modulus would not uh, match. So, most of the load will go on the material which has very high elastic modulus and uh, that is called stress shielding and the bone. Uh, will start losing its uh, um, strength. Okay. So, there is a lot of research now being done uh, looking at material which have very low elastic modulus. That is why ceramics and some of the oxides are coming into picture. They have a compressive strength, uh, compressive elastic modulus matching with that of the bone. 
okay. Uh, the next one is hardness. You need to have desirable hardness because bone has certain hardness. So, um, it should have desirable hardness, but then it should not have too much hardness more than the bone uh, because if I am going to um, con uh, conduct a surgery keeping some material next to the bone, um, then it may penetrate the bone. So, it has to match that is very important hardness. Then comes fracture strength. Uh, so, what is the maximum stress the material can take up before it actually fractures, fractures means breaks. So, that fracture strength is very very important. Fracture toughness, what is the difference between strength and toughness? Uh, suppose there is a crack, how the crack progresses that is called fracture toughness and especially uh, this is very very relevant in ceramic like material ok. It have, helps to evaluate the serviceability performance and long term clinical success of a biomaterial. So, serviceability, long term uh, use of the biomaterial. So, fracture strength is when the material fracture, fracture toughness is if there is a crack how it starts propagating. So, that tells you the toughness of the material. So, these are some of the properties that needs to then you have fatigue. Um, like I said uh, you have uh, these uh, um, diaphragm heart valves which opens closes opens closes. So, this is called a repeated loading or cyclic loading. So, loading unloading loading unloading. So, repeated tensile strength may be there um, or compressive strength. For example, if you see our foot when you are walking um, each foot undergoes a certain compressive force and that is uh, um, sort of uh, repeated. There is a compressive force and then when we lift the foot the compressive force goes away. Then again when we place, place the foot on the ground our whole body um, stands on it. So, there is a compressive foot. So, this is called repeated compressive stresses. So, the material if uh, it is placed in such areas it should be able to take up that that is called fatigue. So, the material may have good uh, tensile strength, but because of the repeated compression, uncompression, compression, uncompression or repeated elongation stopping the elongation repeat again elongation um, the material may uh, fade that is called fatigue ok. Uh, you need to understand this diagram this is called a stress strain diagram for for the next uh, one or two classes I am going to talk quite a lot of mechanical engineering and uh, you will come across these stress strain diagram stress strain modulus uh, compressive stress uh, shear stress uh, creep and so on actually all these are uh, mechanical terminologies um, and you need to understand this if you are planning to design material that is biomaterial which is going to undergo such forces and such um, um, extremes actually ok. Ok, so what is this stress and what is this strain ok. So, stress is nothing but force by area. So, if I am applying a force um, suppose I am pulling a rod of certain diameter imagine I am pulling a rod of certain diameter or I am compressing a rod of certain diameter ok. Um, so, the force that is acting on it divided by the area that gives you stress ok. You can have tensile stress, you can have compressive stress. Uh, how is it uh, represented? What are the units? It is uh, normally Newton per meter square. As you know you must have studied in your school um, ok. Uh, and you have uh, the force always represented as Newton and uh, area that is why meter square. So, Newton per meter square uh, or 1 Newton per meter square is also called Pascal ok. So, you will come across uh, this Newton per meter square Pascal in the next uh, few classes especially when you talk about uh, strength of materials ok. So, once more tensile stress is force per area generally it is represented as Newton per meter square or Pascal. Uh, what is strain? Strain is elongation divided by original length. So, if I have say 1 centimeter rod I am pulling it because of some force tensile force. So, the rod becomes 1.1 centimeter. So, from 1 centimeter it has become 1.1 centimeter then the strain is it got elongated by 0.1 centimeter. So, 0.1 divided by original length is 1. So, strain is 0.1 by 1. Please note that strain has no units because you are dividing the 
elongation by original length whereas stress has some unit okay force by area so it is as newton per meter square or it is represented as pascal don't forget that okay so um, in this axis we plot stress in this axis we plot strain okay so as i keep increasing the stress that means as i keep increasing the force uh, obviously the elongation is going to increase so my um, rod gets longer and longer so strain also increases okay like this do you understand please understand this this is called the elastic region why because once the force is removed the material will come back to its original length okay so all materials have elastic region okay this is called elastic region understand so but then you can't keep on extending so at some point that is called the yield point or yield elongation okay the material will not be elastic it will go into a plastic region that means if i remove the stress or if i remove the force it is not that material will come back to its original because it has become little bit plastic so the first point is elastic and the second point is plastic so if i apply more um, so the strain will keep on increasing and then ultimately it will break okay the material will break that is called the ultimate strength so this is called the yield strength this is called the ultimate strength. Yield strength is up to a certain strength, uh, the material is in the elastic region. That means uh, if I remove the force, material will come back to its original dimension. Whereas beyond that, material will not come back to its original dimension, but it will not break. The breaking is here, that is point of rupture, that is called the ultimate strength. Okay? So this is called the plastic region, this is called the elastic region. So in this elastic region, we can assume this line to be a straight line. So, stress and strain are connected by a linear relationship. Okay? So, stress is equal to slope into strain. That is, in this region, we can consider the whole relationship as a linear. So, the slope, so stress is equal to some slope into strain up to this, okay? up, that is the yield point that is up to the elastic region. So, this is a very important uh, picture, uh, all materials will have uh, some sort of a stress strain diagram, uh, some of them will not show um, yield point, some of them will have different uh, slopes, some of them will have different heights and so on, whether it is a stainless steel or a titanium or a plastic or a ceramic, okay? um, everything will have some stress strain diagram and they will vary quite a lot, I am going to show you. And um, once you know the stress strain diagram, you can decide which type of material to use depending upon the application. Okay? Okay, so, the tensile strength, so the ultimate strength is here before the material actually breaks. Okay? Okay, so, the, the tensile strength if you are talking about is a maximum stress, it can withstand without breaking. So, this is the elastic region, this is the plastic region. In the elastic region, we can assume this line to be a straight line, um, linear, so stress and strain are connected by a linear relation. So, stress is equal to slope into strain. And another important point is strain has no units because you are dividing elongation by original length, whereas stress has a unit because stress is equal to force by area, force is represented as Newton, so force by area is Newton per meter square, um, 1 Newton per meter square is 1 Pascal. Okay. So, um, this is a mathematical representation, uh, epsilon delta is the change in the length or elongation divided by original length, stress is sigma force by area okay. and there is something called the Hooke's law, sigma is equal to E capital E by epsilon. Okay. I told you in the previous graph, um, this is a straight line, so this is the slope, so stress and strain are related by that slope, so that is what this Hooke's law is about. Um, sigma that is the stress is equal to E into epsilon, epsilon is your strain here. Uh, e is called the Young's modulus or modulus of velocity. So, Hooke's law is valid uh, only in the elastic region, please remember that. Um, so, sigma has a unit like I told you in the previous force by area, so Newton by meter square or it Pascal and um, epsilon has no units because you are dividing the elongation by actual length. So this is dimensionless, so 
E will have the units of sigma. So, E will have units of Pascal, remember that. So, E is called the elast modulus of elasticity or Eng's modulus. So, different materials have different types of stress strain diagram. So, here we are plotting epsilon, here we are plotting sigma. Um, so, if you take steel, okay, uh, it goes like this and like this, okay, sorry. So, you have the yield point, you have the ultimate strength. So, you have the yield point and you have the ultimate strength. Whereas, if you look, um, so this is the elastic region, this is the plastic region. If you look at aluminum, it looks uh, more uh, smoother, it does not go like this, but um, because if you keep on extending aluminum, suddenly after some time, it will become very plastic, you know. Um, you can see that it gets extended and extended and when you remove the force, it will not come. Look at ceramic, it goes up and at some stress, it just snaps, breaks, okay. So, it does not go into a plastic. So, ceramic does not have a plastic region, it is elastic only. So, that is a big problem about ceramics. It cannot have very high uh, tensile, it will just snap or it will break. So, we do not use ceramic material uh, when it is in the uh, when it is undergoing tension. Generally, uh, most of the orthopedic implants as you can see, they use steel or they use titanium, metals only they use they will not use uh, ceramics or inorganic material because inorganic material will have a stress strain diagram like this. They will go up and at play some place it will just break, it snaps, okay. So, it will not go into the plastic region at all. So, please lo look at this um, stress strain diagram how different the materials are, okay. Uh, you can see very clearly uh, the, um, the yield st uh, stress for steel. Um, but uh, the aluminum quickly changes from elastic to plastic. So, polymers if you take um, it may the graph may go like this much much lower okay, and so on actually. Um, axial stress is what we call because we are talking about force um, on either side. Imagine this is the rod, uh, A is the cross section, L is the length. So, correspondingly just like um, tensile we can also have compression especially if you look at uh, uh, foot. Uh, leg parts uh, because of the um, weight of the body uh, the material could be under compressive force okay just like tension you can have compressive forces also taking place in that uh, so the normal strain uh, once more as i said um, delta l by l naught we can call l naught could be the original length delta l is the extended length because i am applying a um, okay elongation or delta L is the shortening of the original length because if you are applying a compression, okay. So, epsilon is delta L by L naught, epsilon does not have a unit, okay. There is something called Poisson's ratio, you need to understand Poisson's ratio, which is the, um, the strain in the x axis, x direction, strain in the is a direction, okay. So, if you have a rod like that, okay, imagine you have a rod like this and of length L, okay. So, we have um, Z going like this and X going like that, okay. So, when I am pulling that rod, um, the rod may change its uh, length in this direction as well as the rod may uh, come down in that direction also, both are possible, right. So, there will be a strain. Um, in the L direction as well as there could be a strain in the W direction also, okay. So, um, so if I have a rod, I pull it, um, the length may go delta L, but the, uh, the uh, diameter may go down. So, both can happen, okay. That is called Poisson's ratio. That is why you have a negative here because if uh, 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 one direction it elongates, in another direction it will get contracted, okay. So, Poisson's ratio is also important. Um, because imagine I have a, a metal implant which is fitted inside a hole, okay. Because of tension, the metal implant gets elongated, but its diameter can shrink. So, there could be a hole created, uh, gap created because its diameter has shrunk, okay. So, if you have very high Poisson's ratio, you will be in trouble. So, if there is a tension, uh, the length gets elongated but the diameter decreases. So, there is a gap created between this biomaterial and rest of the bone. 
So, that could be very de deleterious, you could have a infection taking place and if you have a say for example, uh, um, adhesive put into that, that adhesive could break or uh, fail, all these can happen. If you look at uh, teeth implant, they use quite a lot of these titanium uh, screws. Okay, these titanium screws are uh, nicely fitted into the jaw and if there is a tension on these titanium, um, if it gets elongated, there could be gap created between the, uh, the jaw and uh, the metal. So, there could, this gap could lead into accumulation um, of bacteria and so on actually. So, we need to understand what is the Poisson's ratio for the material also. So, we would like to have very minimum changes um, in their dimensions during tension or compression. Okay? So, Poisson's ratio is also very important. Let us look at a problem. Um, problems are very, very important because problems give you an idea about the, um, the, the concepts that I am going to discuss. So, we will try to do as many problems also during the course. So, we have a metal guide wire. Uh, you, must buy, you must have heard of guide wire. These guide wires are used quite a lot, especially when they place ureteral uh, stents inside the body or cardiovascular stents inside the body. These guide wires are made up of stainless steel or uh, nickel titanium. So, they actually guide the material inside through the artery or uh, through veins uh, so that the um, surgeon can place the material uh, at the desired place. Uh, and uh, he or she will be looking um, at the location using uh, uh, certain uh, visual devices. So, a metal guide wire is 2.5 mm dia and it is 2 meter long, okay? 2 meter means about 6 feet long. When a force of 12 Newton uh, is applied, forces we, I said we will always use the term Newton during a surgery, it stretches by 0.3 mm. Okay? Uh, determine the stress in the wire. So, we are looking at elastic, determine the strain in the wire, determine the modulus of the wire. Okay, stress, how do you calculate? Stress is nothing but force by area. Um, force is given as 12 Newton, uh, diameter is given here. So, area is pi d square by 4, you must have studied in your school long time back. So, stress is that, area is equal to pi into diameter square by 4, pi into 2.5 square by 4 that comes to 4.9 millimeter square, force is 12 divided by 4. So, you get sigma that is a stress 2.44 Newton per millimeter square. Strain, strain is um, elongation divided by original length, strain has no units. So, elongation is 0.3 mm, uh, mm and uh, original length is 2 meter. So, um, 0.3 by 2000, do not forget. Uh, 1 meter is equal to 1000 millimeter. So, you need to convert that. So, 0 0.3 divided by 2000, there are no units for strain. So, 0 0.00015. What is the modulus? Especially if it is in the elastic region, the modulus is given by stress by strain, simple. So, stress is given here, strain is given here. Okay? So, we use the Hooke's law, stress is equal to uh, strain um, into modulus. So, modulus is equal to stress by strain, okay? simple. Um, now, we need to, uh, so 2.44 divided by 0 0.00000, so there is Newton per millimeter square. As I said, the units of uh, modulus uh, um, or Young's modulus will, will be same as that of force. Now, 1000 Newton per millimeter square is 1 giga Pascal. This giga Pascal um, mega Pascal means 10 power 6 Pascal, giga Pascal means 10 power 9 Pascals. So, you need to remember all these. So, 1 giga Pascal is 1000. So, if I divide by 1000, okay, I will get 16.26 giga Pascals. So, the modulus is given by 16.26. So, you need to remember this uh, conversion factor also. 1 giga Pascal is equal to 1000 Newton per millimeter square. Okay? And, um, 1 mega Pascal is equal to 1 Newton per millimeter square. Okay. Let us look at another problem. A stainless steel metal implant of diameter 2 millimeter and length 20 millimeter is placed inside which undergoes a tensile force, force of 10 Newton. Estimate the change in length it undergoes, modulus is 200 giga Pascal. Um, as I said uh, in the previous slide, 
1 giga Pascal is 1000 Newton per millimeter square. So, 200 means multiplied by 1000 so many Newton per millimeter square. Okay. So, uh, the force is given, uh, diameter is given, force by area will give you the stress. Okay. The modulus is given. Uh, so, from there we can calculate strain, original length is 20 millimeters. So, from there we can calculate what is the change in length that is delta L understood. Okay. So, um, diameter is 2 millimeter, length is 20 millimeter. So, cross sectional area pi d square by 4. So, pi into 2 square by 4, 2 square is 4. So, pi by 4 um, by 4, 4 and 4 gets cancelled. So, cross sectional area is 3.14 millimeter square. So, please remember we need to maintain the units very correctly. The force is equal to force is equal to um, okay, there is a, a mistake here. So, it is not 10 Newton, we will assume it as 100 Newton okay. force is equal to 100 Newton force is equal to 100 Newton. So, okay. so, stress is equal to force by area. So, 100 divided by 3, uh, 100 divided by 3 will be 31.83 Newton per mm square, we use the same units. Okay, so, stress is equal to um, modulus into strain. So, stress divided by modulus will give me the strain. Okay. Stress divided by modulus will me give me the strain. Okay. 31.83 divided by 200,000. Okay. Stress is uh, 31.83, modulus is 200,000. So, 200 giga Pascal is 200,000. So, that comes to 1.59 10 power minus 4. Now, uh, um, elongation delta L is equal to L in uh, length original length into strain. Okay. So, strain is this original length is 20 mm. So, multiplied by 20 um, this will be in millimeter because uh, the original length is in 20 millimeter. Understand this problem. So, the diameter is given length is given. Um, so, force is 100 Newton cross sectional area is pi d square by 4 stress is equal to force by area 31.83 Newton per millimeter square, uh, strain is equal to stress by modulus, modulus is 200 giga Pascal which is 200,000 Newton per millimeter square, strain is equal to stress by E. So, 31.83 divided by 200,000, so this comes to 1.59 10 power minus 4, there is no units so far because stress and uh, modulus have same units. Then delta L that is the elongation uh, is given by length into strain. Okay. Strain is this original length is 20. So, you multiply this by 20 uh, it becomes 0 0.00318. So, the length uh, has increased uh, okay, by 0 0.00318 understand millimeters. Now, look at the same as similar situation, okay, but uh, the modulus has changed. Okay. Uh, so, originally I used a stainless steel metal implant, now I am using a titanium metal implant. Titanium has lower modulus uh, 100 giga Pascal, otherwise it is the same 2 millimeter um, diameter and 20 millimeter is the length, um, it undergoes 100 Newton, oh sorry, it, it, this also undergoes 100 um, Newton per meter square, sorry 100 Newton tensile force. So, in the previous one it is a stainless steel implant with a modulus of 200 giga Pascal here, here okay. in this particular case it is a titanium implant with a modulus of 100 giga Pascal. So, what is the change in length? Uh, same way we have the diameter is 2 mm, length is 20, 20, 20 mm, cross sectional area is pi d square by 4 3.1, uh, force is equal to 100 Newton, 100 uh, Newton. So, stress is equal to force by area. So, 100 okay, divided by 3.1. So, 31.83 Newton per millimeter square. Okay. Um, then strain is given by stress by modulus sorry stress by modulus. So, 31.83 here the modulus is 100,000 in the previous case is 200,000. Um, so, we get a 31.8 into 10 power minus 4. Increase in length is equal to uh, original length into strain, original length is 20 mm. So, the increase is 0 0.00636 mm. Did you notice that? Uh, when I use a stainless steel implant which has got a modulus of uh, 200 giga Pascal, 
applying same if you have the same diameter, same length, same force, I got 0 0.003 approximately. And when I use a titanium plant which has got 100 as its uh, modulus of elasticity or Young's modulus, that uh, increase in length is 0 0.0063. Those are the, so, it, has, it gets elongated much more okay, than the previous one. Okay. So, you think it is not a problem, but it is actually a problem. Imagine I have uh, a biomaterial designed which has got stainless steel and titanium. Okay. So, it is a biomaterial uh, which contains stainless steel and titanium. I keep it um, inside the human body and it is undergoing a say a tension okay, of uh, say uh, 100 Newton. It is going undergoing a tension of 100 Newton, uh, but it is a mixed uh, biomaterial which has got uh, both stainless steel and titanium uh, together. So, one of them will undergo 0 0.003 mm elongation, another one will undergo 0 0.006 elongation. You are in big trouble, right? Stainless steel uh, will undergo 0 0.003 elongation because it has got higher modulus 200. Um, okay, whereas a giga Pascal, whereas titanium has 100 giga Pascal as its modulus, so it will undergo 0 0.00636. So there is a difference in which these two ma materials will elongate. Although this is a single biomaterial which contains both these, okay. Um, so the dif this difference is 0 0.003 if I subtract this, or almost 3.18 microns. So if I have a biomaterial which is made up of uh, a small rod of stainless steel and a rod of titanium and I place it um, say suppose I fuse it on the top here and the top here and I place it inside the body and that particular material is undergoing a tension. Although the tension is constant, uh, titanium uh, will get elongated slightly more than the stainless steel and this difference could be 3 microns. So, this biomaterial is in big trouble. So, the most important lesson from this is when I am having um, using different materials um, and uh, prepare a biomaterial, if the um, modulus do not match and if the material is undergoing uh, a tension, each of these materials may have different elongation. This can happen in compression also, each of the material will have different compression or elongation. Okay. So, the whole biomaterial could fail. So, there has to be a match of uh, the tensile properties, especially if they face uh, these type of uh, um, axial st uh, strains or axial stresses or axial compressions. Okay. If they are not going to face this type of uh, mechanical forces, then it does not matter. But uh, if uh, they are going to be placed inside, uh, for example, in the human body, um, and it is facing a, a compressive force or a tensile force and I have different materials, the modulus of um, has to be modulus of elasticity or the, um, the Young's modulus has to be same, otherwise their elongations may differ. Uh, so, one material may, may have a slightly longer elongation than the other and uh, this may lead into the failure of the entire material. Okay. So, we shall continue more on these uh, mechanical properties in the next class also. Thank you very much.